All right, so now we have a lot of the curves that were set out in the rule book defined, and we've got some reference curves that we got from the existing unit. And what I'm going to do next is massage the 2D profile curve that we have here, which I think is uh, one of the most descriptive to build the rest of the lacrosse stick off of. And we're going to massage that to match the, the middle profile. Okay, so first copy that object to the driving curves layer, and I'm going to hide the uh, 2D profiles temporarily. Move that down using the elevator mode and hitting control. And I'm going to turn the 2D profile back on. And copy paste another set for the top. Okay, now moving to the right view, I'm going to use the move command. Hit shift until you get an intersection, and we're going to do the same with the top curve. Hit shift and intersect it with the top. Okay. Now I'm going to hide the profile curve so that there's not as much confusion. Hit full screen just for a little bit of clarity. And I'm going to use the elevator mode and snap the end control points to the profile. And do the same at the rear here, turning the control points on. And maybe pick the last three. Enter elevator mode by hitting control, t control and then snap to the intersection point on the middle profile. Now in the right view, let's start moving these curves around, <clears throat> moving the edit points around. I'm going to try to the best of my ability to, to move this merely up and down. That way you're not changing any of those dimensions that we had um, modified before, or that we had uh, laid out before. Now you might ask, you know, in Rhino there's the the opportunity to project one curve onto another, and um, that's actually a really good technique, but it tends to produce some pretty heavy curves. So many times you can get really close to what you want and you get some really clean curves simply by manipulating man manipulating some edit points. <clears throat> and again, I'm not following it the you know the underlying surface tremendously close. I still want to keep a certain not a surface but the the control curves that we copied um I'm not copying it verbatim using it more as a reference than anything else. Okay. Well, we've tried, but you know, this is still too drastic of a curvature change in here, so I'm going to add in a control point from the point editing toolbar. And Right about there looks good. Turn on the control points, move that down.
And if we look in the top view, we see that the control points here need to move out a little further to form a scoop. And in the perspective view, I'm just going to O snap it out until I see that it lines up in the top view. And I'm also going to, I'd like to analyze this curve. The curvature graph shows the rate of change of curvature. And really, I'm not entirely certain what that means. All I know is that this has to be smooth. So if your curvature graph is not smooth, then it means that the underlying uh, curve that it represents isn't real smooth either. So you try and, and, and your highlights, especially if you're doing a shiny, shiny object, your highlights are going to be maybe slightly off. There might be mismatches, and they're <clears throat> not going to maybe be as smooth and dynamic as you might hope it to be. But if you're doing Moltec parts or, or just heavily textured parts, some of this is really unnecessary. But I'm hoping that this can be made out of a, a shiny material. Maybe we can clean up the graph around here somewhat. Make it a little bit more smooth. Now I don't know why the the Wacom drivers seem to really mess do a number on on Rhino. Every once in a while you'll see this tumble the viewport tumble erratically, which is why I have the zoom extents um, command in my toolbar. So that's pretty useful to have. And I'm going to mirror that around. And okay, at, front, at the front, it looks somewhat, somewhat smooth. The curvature graph. But let's go ahead and manually manipulate it so that it, it comes in smoother. And especially at the bottom. They're subtle changes, but they really affect the the quality of your surfaces and the quality of your curves. Okay. Gonna get out of that. Escape to turn out the turn down the control points. And I'm going to do the same thing actually on the bottom. Mirror that over. Again, remember I've assigned a shortcut to my mirror command because I use it quite frequently just to check. There you go. Wacom drivers booking out. Turn on the control points again and let's. Oops, wrong side. That looks a little bit better. And let's Cool.